hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi. Hi, and I'm not in Vancouver. So Me neither. <laughs> but you were supposed to be in Vancouver. I know, and I'm really <laughs> bummed about it. But I have had like a shit week. So I I there's just been a lot going on. Work, everything. I couldn't find my passport. I looked all over my apartment. And I don't know if it's the stress of that or like and like we had like or we had to write a review at work. I had a huge presentation. I had like a bunch of stuff, like projects and like in the middle of it, like, you know, when you're so stressed that your body is like just having like meltdown mode, you know? Yes, yes, yeah. I don't know why, but of course I got sick in the middle of it. And I'm like, mm. I don't know if it's just been like the whole fall. So if you've been like, why hasn't he posted videos this week? And then someone last night was like, why isn't there another Was You Robbed video? And I'm like, girl. We will get there. <laughs> we will get yeah. there. If we've waited four and a half years, we can keep going. It's a slow move. burn. A slow uh, burn. Yeah. I really want to thank our viewers, especially Daniel, who was helping me get to the final. And I'm so appreciative and I'm so bummed that I couldn't get there. So, um, but I we haven't really talked about the final too much because... No. I, I've been like a little under the weather. And by the way, I cut my chin again, getting ready for this. And it's just... My God. But what I'm, did you say when we first signed on? Because that was I'm really like, funny. I'm, I feel like the kid that keeps popping his jump in the same spot of every program. Because, <laughs> exactly. of course, I'm, like, rushing to get ready. Mike's in the you know. The whole now there's, there's going to be a show somewhere called The Shaving Lesson, where they're going to be like, Dave always messes up at the same spot. And I'm it's on this it. side. Always on this yeah. side, because I must go like that. And it must be You're outside the circle. You're outside, outside the, the circle. circle. So <laughs> okay. I admit it, and it's Drew. So, Jonathan... I'm a little worried. You were a little grumpy over text about the Grand Prix final. And we need you to be the one in a good mood. Remember that time you were in a bad mood and we had to like refilm the show? I don't even remember what competition we was. We really filmed. We filmed the entire thing again just to make sure it I wasn't okay so It is okay if bad. I'm a bitch because people expect it. But we need you to be optimistic. Okay, so this is... I'm like a wounded bird when I get disenchanted by the skating. It. We but um, have it. you were mad at everyone last night. I don't know. I really was, and then I slept it off, and I relooked at new at the programs with fresh eyes in new ways, and looked for positive and more specific things, and I felt much better about Good. the entire Good. situation. I'm happy because yeah. I was a little worried about how yeah. this was about to go. So <laughs> let's start with Zagreb before we even because we've got we've got like some highlight juniors to talk about. We've obviously got the Grand Prix final. But let's start with Zagreb, because that's how the competition actually unfolded throughout this very jam-packed week of skating. So yes. we had, and remember, if the blood starts pouring, just let me know, and we can pause. Um, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> so it started with the debut of Deanna and Nate's Somewhere program. Now, you know I really love Deanna. I think she makes a gorgeous position in a lift. Absolutely, Yeah. I can't defend this program. I can't. Wait, it was it was something. It was something. <laughs> it's not yeah. just somewhere. It was some. So, I. It's a Jim Peterson special. Mm hmm. And remember, Jim loves to choreograph. He's very stubborn. He's he's a lot of things. He's he I. You know, Jim is he's, he's a lot, and I I like Jim. <laughs> He's a lot. I, I can't. He's very um, driven, intense, and uptight, and really loves Barbara Streisand. And you know, he loves, really does. And you know that, like, he has good feelings about Barbara because Tara and Danny won nationals skating to a horrible Barbara cover of Phantom that you hated. So why not do a. A horrible disco ish. Is it disco edition remix? It's, um, it sounds like we're about to go on a guided meditation to yes. somewhere. You know what I mean? Um, and the thing I thought, like, the, and we'll get to Ashley and Tim, obviously, a real headliner story. Oh, I didn't even mean to say it that way. A real um, headbanger. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean to. That was in, unintentional. Um, but that was a real story here. But, yeah. um, in the way that their team has having them look outwards. Yeah. They've gone to Nina Mosier, they've gone to other coaches, they've gone to other choreographers. I wonder, you know how sometimes when you find like a civilization that's been like untouched, that's a bit, this feels so like closed. Yeah, it seems closed doors. Like we're doing what we're doing and maybe he has a right to be a little suspicious because when 
Delilah did come to offer assistance, she swiped a team away. So I don't know if he's being protective, but it feels like it's very insular mm -hmm. right now, the kind of information and aesthetic. He does have a lot of talent, after. especially with lifts, I will say. He's the one that came up with Tara and Danny's lifts. And a lot of the transitions that they get so much credit for, like into their throws or into some of their elements, he actually did create those. So I understand why he feels the way he feels when everyone is like being like, oh my God, you know, and they're retweeting this as if something's new and they've been doing it for three years and he's the one who made it. However, right. you got to know your strengths. And like this... And I think he's good to putting teams together to a point mm -hmm. and like packaging them. But I think when you get to the very, very top, there's a, often a disconnect where skaters, where coaches need to learn and grow. And we're not getting past his kind of Udell upbringing, you know, and it's it's a little... Perhaps. Yeah. And, and I think, and, and you correct me if you felt differently when you watched them live. For me, um, one of the things that separated them from some of the other higher level teams was, was speed. Yeah. a little bit and something as broad and as ballady and as slow paced mm -hmm. as somewhere especially in this very unusual of it to me it almost emphasized the lack of speed and energy instead of helping it mm -hmm. um so I, I thought it was an unusual pairing yeah it's an unusual pairing obviously first of all when the music started and all of a sudden it went to like sound effects and chimes i thought oh here we go you just so know Dave, uh, this is because it's a bernstein year i've been singing all this bernstein and i needed a recording of somewhere because i just mm -hmm. passively listen and try to like kind of memorize and i actually downloaded that exact version and each time it came on in my playlist of like practice your words practice your words like i couldn't stop laughing because it's so over the top absurd it's so, so bad it's so bad it's yeah. just yeah I, and not i know that it was just so i will say positives um they got through it but the, there's a thing with the teams and you know tara kane skating skills never improved under jim and we watched nate's haven't either and it's been with a long time and he looks like he was taught to skate by max aaron and it's like there's a lot and of even in, the, in like the death spiral positions and things like that i wonder i, I don't obviously have a refined well, eye like having this, done it you know yeah and there's an uncomfortability i become um a bit unsettled as a viewer look before which, they go into the which... toes she hits a wonderful forward extension with her leg turned out and her toe pointed and Nate's is like, you know, and you're like, please stop doing that, you know, and they've, right. and, and Jim panics, he's changed their sow cow entrances three times to, from a mohawk to the back outside three to the, you know, he's done different things each time. And it's, it's wonky, you know, as it tends to be, um, the, the short was uh, kind of unforgivable. I have to say it was really, really quite poor, but, um, they keep making certain mistakes. They did get through it, so there was, you know, some positives. Nate actually saved her on the death spiral. There was a little mm -hmm. bit of a fluke error. And they made through it in the free skate. The free skate, they won the technical, and it was quite strong for them. She had a little glitch on a back outside three where she tripped, but she still did the triple toe, double toe after it, and Nate was the one who missed that jump. And I know Cindy's been helping him on his jumps, um, but it just, you know, there's just some things that are not gelling clicking as well as yeah they could. clicking yeah. yeah yeah so i think there needs to be some sort of a reorganization in this team that's obviously has a lot like they have the lifts the lifts look great um it's the other stuff that's still not coming together and it's tricky and and we'll see this when we go to vancouver as well mm -hmm. it's it's one of those things when you have someone as special and refined and as 6.0 mm -hmm. as deanna the comparison becomes just even more jarring yeah. than if you just had, you know, a, a token girl who came up now in IJS and it, it has certain qualities to it. Um, free legs are higher on one side. Landing positions are prettier on one side of the thing. And and But that was ingrained from day one, most likely for her. So I, I'm sure it's very difficult um, to, to feel like you're playing catch up as a partner. Yeah. And I noticed that he does well. Like, notice he had his best skate of the season when Deanna was sick he seems to do well when he has like a weaker female partner and then he could be like the big man and then and 
now, like, he has a really strong driven girl, and that's a problem. So they kind of have to even that out and work through it. Right. In the partnership, right. to uh, even the approach, because, like, maybe she needs to, like, pull back a little bit, and he needs to, you know, become more confident. But if he is having jump lessons and, like, success when he works with Cindy, I don't know, why wouldn't you bring Cindy to the competition? And, like, maybe you'd have, like, that 20% chance that, like, it would help him be that much better if she can just yeah why not give you every opportunity to be at your your peak yeah it just seems to be an element with jim is like i'm the choreographer i'm this like when they're at competitions with marie france if you notice he doesn't let marie france sit in the kiss and cry with them like whereas nina will like be seen with ashley and tim like all of those things do help your points a little bit like when Lori, when we know that Lori does vincent's choreography and like she actually shows her face next to vincent and the kiss and cry it does help his marks a bit like it does like you're like you're right it's, it's all about perception yeah, yeah. of course but think... by the same token it may be the very reason he wants to take sole ownership yeah. you know what i mean so that it doesn't seem like he didn't do it that someone else did it but that's and and i view that's this you know in anything you're though. teaching when is it about you and when is it about the student? And I imagine it's very, he's he's navigating his own reputation and his own club as well. But at, but then you have these skaters who really need what's best for them. So I'm, I'm assuming it becomes a tricky balancing act of priorities. Do you remember when Carlo would farm out his skaters and have them go with other people? And he said, yeah, they're really going to leave me? Yeah, okay. You know, like that's yeah. who you have to be as a coach. And I seem like there seems to be too much insecurity in the U.S., yeah. coaches to really do that so yeah. i would be trying to bring everyone in you know that has but right. i'm a different kind of person so you know yeah. like a different a collaborator kind of... through and through <laughs> well i'm more of a neurotic type you know like okay. am i missing something <laughs> you know so okay in a different way but anyway they did a great job in long um overall it was an improvement they seem to be rounding into a jim peterson national special uh um, right but I'm wondering, you know, where this goes. I think Tara and Danny are obviously on a very good track for nationals at this point. Um, let's talk about the Kinerums, because uh, I thought, um, okay, so they look better. They do, uh, overall. I think that she looks more confident, but they still look like there's something missing. They obviously don't look like, I don't know if it's just that Todd Sand is um, more of a laid back personality and that Jenny is more of a leader, but when they're in the kiss and cry, they seem to like not have any like chemistry. Like they don't seem to really talk or have discussions. It literally looks like Mitch Moyer plays token man with them in the kiss and cry. And they kind Perhaps, of just seem yeah. like they don't know each other. So like, are they leading the training? Like they don't. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. It's been so short lived. They have such little experience in this. Things are clearly going through huge growth pains. Like yeah. at that juncture. And you know, um, Alexa has a history of being very entertaining in the kiss and cry, but, but she's like, not at all now. She looks what, tired. What, what's you know? that vibe? It's, it's 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 something's off kilter in the energy, and um, and I'll say this about, and it applies a bit to uh, Tarasova and Morozov also. Mm-hmm. Uh, like in the long here, with the just kind of like aborted pops and mm-hmm. like jumps that are just were never happening. You know, doing two and a half rotations, whatever unusual mistakes mm-hmm. for her even though they're becoming a bit more common this season, it, it strikes me as like a flippant teenager that's like, whatever. I don't you know, like, get, okay, I understand. I'm seeing, like, I can see why you feel that way. I get from her is a mental exhaustion that usually sets in after the Olympic season that every team has to deal with, right? Like the, right. the exhaustion of getting to the Olympics when there's one spot in your country and you've gone through it and then you go through... M- multiple moves and coaching changes and Aliona and Delilah and then this, I think they're honestly like, they look exhausted. Like, I don't think it's anyone's fault. Like, I don't think it's Ginny and Todd's fault that they just, they look tired to me. Like, they just look, honestly, they look like if they took a long nap and they took a couple of days off. And then they and reset and reset and that's like it looks like what they did from the last competition to this competition and from the first to the second and then if they can do this to nationals and just wake up a bit more i think that they will be successful i would i honestly feel like if they just took out the triple toes for the next couple of weeks and put in side by side double axles 
they might just like be super consistent in the short term and obviously that's not going to help them in the long run but like to just get right. through nationals it just feels like the triple toes are not have not been happening but she has done them right like she has landed it earlier in the season i don't i don't know their stats off of the top of my head it hasn't been that important but uh um, right. it looks like they can do it right like i really think that they can get there they just need time so i think having a month between now and nationals would be really valuable to them because like they probably haven't been in a place for a month for that long well long that's time. the thing really feeling settled i mean i'm glad at least in all of this they really do seem to have a good rapport with one another i mean I, obviously i know they're married but like yeah. it i mean that can help create that sense of stability but like in different countries in different cities in different you know states all this sort of stuff it has to be the program it has, to be has gotten watered down and it looks to have lost some of its Very integrity so. they need yeah. benoit to come visit them i think that would be really helpful i know he just had a baby uh his wife just had a baby you know like i think that that would be really beneficial if they could work with him again before nationals and yeah. tr- like a tune-up and just kind yeah. of bring them all together um i have to say i think vanessa and morgan do have the better cut of wicked game by far it just has a little mm-hmm. bit more edge to it um, yes well a bit more current quality to it yeah. through that rendition and through their particular interpretation mm-hmm. um it, it's just something about it seems so current and this seems almost dated yeah but the short really does i mean some people disagree with me i think on the short but the short is interesting yeah. but if you take away some of those interesting transitions then it does seem a little odd she because then really... we're getting bursts of it she looks great with the benoit choreography here and in the beginning especially i thought alexa was doing a great job but in the time away from aliona working on it i've noticed that chris seems to have regressed a little bit with the choreography because at nebelhorn i was like that when they started the short program i sat back and i was like well 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 look at this look at this and he would do all those leg extensions that he's no longer doing and you know as often like there's only one i think instead of the two and um yeah, but I, I liked that it, it forced him to try it, and I felt like he grew merely having done the yeah. Neville Horn performance. But yeah, I would love to see them revisit some of his energy that he brought in when he they were Neville Horn. He may just have an off day or been tired or whatever. But the, the spins at the end continue to be a real struggle, and this was not their best outing. Obviously, the spin rules have changed. It's more difficult for pairs, and we've seen that with a lot of teams. Um, overall, and like ta- uh, Talon in Estonia, no one. And there was some emblem, I should have written it down, there's some emblem on the ice that it was like, Croatia is full of life. Or full, full of life, of people. with a complete empty arena. With like, a complete empty stadium, and like just like one person clapping again. And I was like, that has got to be so trippy to try to go do a cool, energetic performance for no one. And isn't it like so like skating fans that they're so like by the book that like, there were people who like bought seats up and like they didn't move down. That's the hilarious thing. Well, because then you wonder, does it look worse? Because there was like two people sitting in the middle of a complete sea of empty rows. And you thought like, does that actually make it look worse (laughs) when there's like only two people versus literally no one? But yeah. Anyway, so obviously Ashley and Tim, they got more views than they've ever um, gotten on. um... So this is a really interesting situation. And I don't think that everyone gets it because I know that I tweeted something and that people they, I mean, everyone wants to always protect the skater and everything, but these are not neither not new pair of skaters, not and not new to skating. So, okay, when someone has a neck injury, Jonathan, what is the first thing that you know not to do when someone hurts their neck or spine? Right. Well, I would never move them, even if their neck was fine, because I would be like, I don't know anything about it. I I shouldn't be involved at all. And this is a, tri- a tricky situation. Because you can situation. damage their spine further. And you can, especially yeah. when the spine is vulnerable. that And it can lead to paralysis, right? Like that is yeah. what can happen in the, you know. So you're not supposed to do that. When it happens in practice, what happens is that coaches will come out and put um, blankets, coats, yeah. everything over the skater until, you know, paramedics come. So that's the thing is that you, you're supposed to know that from early, early on in training that you do not you do not do this um it can't be the first time that this has happened because their lifts often look scary um so he did have a tryout with marissa castelli right and i remember talking with bruno mercat and like 
one of the reasons they went with Mervyn is because it was felt that Tim couldn't lift Marissa successfully. And I know that then he went to shows and then he's come back and things are different. But like, there's clearly like, she's not holding it's not herself his in the strength. lifts. Yeah. The lifts yeah. are not his strength. She's not holding herself well at all. And you can kind of see that in some of their positions. And I know she feels tall shamed and it's not that. It's, look, there is like... A danger factor. And their lifts often look very scary. Even in the short program, if you watch the lift, you're like, ooh, does they have, do they have the balance? Are they going into the boards? Well, the like, center of gravity seems very, very up in yeah. the lifts or something. And, and it, it gives you hesitation. Yeah. yeah. So like this often on many of their lifts, it has like a swingy quality to it sometimes too when they change position. And you're like, what? You know, and the twist can... The twist has improved, but the twist in the past could be a little off. So it's a little wild um, to where, you know, when we talk about them having a ceiling because they're not always getting the levels and I don't see them coming. So when this happens, so not only did Tim obviously make a mistake, the ref doesn't stop the music. And And this is who I, I really have a bigger problem with because I'm trying really hard to give Tim the benefit of the doubt because he felt also probably not quite sure what happens. Yeah. You don't know. Maybe maybe she even said something. Like, he, uh, we don't know. Yeah. And and I just have to assume he was stunned. And yes, he made an error, but I am not like, shame on you. You know, as I'm much not like, as shame I on am you, to the but, I mean, well, I mean, he made an error, right? Like, he made, yeah. but then yeah. obviously she, you know, the ref makes an error. And obviously the coaches should be like, uh, stop, you know, like, hello. This is just like, it's, uh, there's a lot going on here. Um, the ref, the fact that the ref didn't stop the music is why do you have a ref? You know, they're... For, there's literally only one thing for them to do in this entire event. And that was to stop this moment. Yeah. I mean, they're supposed to watch the judging scores, <clears throat> uh, stop this moment. Uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of questions raised about that. Because remember the ref, uh, there was a lot of talk with the ref when Han Yu and Bo Yang Jin had the collision at that event. Like there was like, but that ref... wasn't even during a performance. No, that was during the warm up. Uh, uh, yeah, that was yeah. just a warm up, and it was discussed, and you saw, and then the, the, they visited and they yeah. assessed him, and all. Even though I disagreed with that decision, yeah, um, it was clear that a de- decision was being met. Right. It yeah. wasn't just on the fly. And sometimes this isn't one of those old Soviet pairs whose music just randomly went out and they don't want to stop. No. This was literally like a very dangerous situation. Yeah. They had quite a deal of the program left. This wasn't a final move thing. No. There was, a, there was enough left that it was very inappropriate. Yeah. And really inappropriate. And then you, and then like they're sitting in the kiss and cry when they're putting like the neck brace on her and the when blankets. When it can do nothing. Yeah. The, 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 the neck brace in the kiss and cry, nonsense. It, it's, it's done when you needed it. This it, is ridiculous. I mean, the whole thing, I mean, obviously she got checked out afterwards, but like, wh- the, why are you even sitting in the kiss and cry at this point looking for your fifth right. place marks? Like what, what is really going yeah. on here? You know, like, I think you get a pass. You're not going to get fined. You know, like we, we see. Uh, well, you like we were talking about with Gracie, sometimes you wonder in these skating moments, where is the adult in the room? Well, the, the, the adult grew up in skating, so that's what the answer is. So yeah, I guess, like, you know, yeah. and all this stuff we keep hearing about, you know, especially from these people we know that are on the committees for safe sport this and safe sport that. And it's like, well, if, so this if was the moment. moment, this was the moment, yeah. you know, that yeah, just that you proved you actually don't care if it's a safe sport or not. It was just 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 a real wreck all around and unfortunate scary and it was literally i'm not so squirmish but like i can't i couldn't go back and her body flopped on the ice like it lost all tension like the limbs lost like she was knocked out for maybe a second you know like something and now i you have to tell me if i'm reading into something because i felt like even before when she made that weird trip after one of the jumping sequences that was not Mm -hmm. really out of the jump she just seemed very off kilter even leading up to the lift. So I don't know. And I don't know. How to I didn't know that. if there was something that happened in a practice or if there was something that happened on a warm up because something was making me nervous even before I knew mm-hmm. what was going to happen. Um, something seemed un- unsteady. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was a very scary. It was a very scary performance. And I hope that Tim, you almost need like some sort of like PTSD <laughs> Like kind of therapy. I mean, he obviously felt awful. Her. He obviously felt awful about the whole thing. Yes. You know, um, 
as you realize, oh my gosh, I moved her neck. Oh my yeah. gosh, why didn't I stop? But yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it, I'm the one, really you know, tough. like the lift comes down, you blame yourself for that, you know, could I have saved yeah. her? I mean, this is what happens when you're doing these IJS, like crazy, like we're going to unravel down and then do, I mean, at a right. certain point, this is a part of the sport that's really dangerous. Um, and you wonder, like, is it really worth unraveling the lift like that? Like, to get the extra level? Right. Like, is the IJS, right. like, a little ridiculous at certain points? So, yeah, that was a unfortunate, um, really, situation. Sure. Hopefully, you know, you have to think, like, so how much time, like, if she does have dizziness or anything after it, like, you know, they're going to have weeks off, probably, you know, to get ready for nationals, to have to fly in an airplane when your head probably, like... You from can, Croatia, not yeah. from Denver or something. Yeah. yeah. Just awful. You know, like, yeah. so I think our heart goes out to her. Like, you have to think, like, I wouldn't wish that on anyone to have to, like, fly home when you probably are, like, feeling terrible, you know, and there's yeah. not enough aspirin in the world to try to get you through it. So. Exactly. Or a pill that poor mm -hmm. Tim can take living yeah. with guilt and, yeah. and trauma. It's very scary. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that was, um, I thought, Piper and Paul in the ice dance event. Um, great job. The little Russian team that could obviously won the pair event here, and they've, you know, really come through. Um, Piper and Paul in the dance, I thought that they really kind of got their mojo back and looked like mm -hmm. um, they would have belonged at the Grand Prix Final. And I think that's what, Absolutely. They, needed. That's what they needed to show here. They got a, a good score, and they did well overall, and I think that that was important for them. It'll be Absolutely. interesting to see moving forward. Like, I think that they have kind of gotten themselves back with Canadian Nationals. I don't think Weaver and Poggio really have much of a, a shot uh, going into after them doing so well at Croatia. I think that they got um, everything back. Yeah, in they order. solidified that. Yeah. In the men's, you know, Jason Brown, isn't it amazing that like the crazy year that Brian Orser was having where he was getting all of this talent and then Boyang Jin didn't come and Medvedev has had these problems and uh, growing pains and then like he's traveling all the time and Gogolev is now just working with Lee Barkel and he winds up winning the final after right. you know the event Brian went with him he wound up doing poorly when it was in Canada like it's just been kind of like a shit sandwich for Brian Orser uh, in the last couple of months. Um, but, you know, life and skating is round. Everyone has their up moments and then everyone has their down moments. And, you know. So so forgive my ignorance, but who was the woman that he was sitting with then? I, that's I didn't Karen recognize Preston. Him. Oh, that is. Okay, because yeah. it was like just like a side view. From, we haven't from seen where her in like 25 was. years. So, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say. Okay. So that's Karen Preston of the 92 Olympics. Uh, right. She was shown on TV wearing that like Melanie colored dress and with Ellen Berger. It was Berger a whole thing. Ellen yeah. Berger was in like a green sweatshirt. So yes, that was during the 90, that's, that's that Karen Preston. Uh, she has been working with Jason. I know it's like on the technical and stuff as his support coach. So um, she traveled with him here. I forget where Tracy was, but I think Obviously, Brian was with June at the Grand Prix Final, so there's a lot of stuff. Maybe Tracy was working with Evgenia uh, at home, so, yeah. Um, Jason has been doing his job again and again. Yeah, still, he really has. Some doubles and still some problems always on the second triple axle that seems like it's always going to be a little bit of a bugbear for him. Right. You know, where it's like, is that under-rotated? Is it two-footed? Like, what's going on? Um, but I think it's getting better, and his confidence looks to be growing. Uh, the quality the of elements is consistently rising at um, what seems like a sustainable level. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We're not pretending he's doing the quads out cow, so that's always a plus. Um, right. He looks like he's getting very organized in his approach. Organized right? is a great word for it. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I still hate the shirt and the free skate. Well, the, just the whole free skate in general just was, I think, a, a swing and a miss a little bit artistically, but he's still able to find beautiful movement within it. Yeah. Um, but the short, really, I have to hand it to Rohin mm -hmm. because they they really found it. And I, let's see what happens next season. Yeah. You know, if, if there's a next season, let's see what um, the, the different angle they'll take now that they've been around him a bit more. Think about it. Think about how differently this season looked about a month and a half ago to now he's beaten Kolya Daha like twice was Kolya yeah. in France I think or 
But Jason had... Okay, just think about it. He had... No, Ali... Aliyev was in trance, and Aliyev. so was the one I can't even stand who was on the, who was Samarin. third. Yeah, right. that's the one. <laughs> that's the one. All right. Oh, my God. We're going to get okay. a million comments, and I... Yeah, exactly. Okay. Ignore all of them. Um, so, Jason, he has the, the surprise second, the silver medal in France, wins here over Kolyada, who's supposed to be, who should be probably one of the top skaters in the world, challenging yeah. for uh, the world title. I mean, it absolutely, like, got to hand it to him. And he hasn't really changed his technical content, Jason. You know, like, he's doing what he can do, but well, doing he's it very cleaned, well. He's cleaned Clean. it up. And, yeah. and because it was one of those things, like, if you're going to miss and that's all you're doing, mm -hmm. it's really difficult to go mm -hmm. with you. But the, the minute he just at least delivers that mm -hmm. kind of, quote, unquote, bare minimum, if you will, the judges push him right along. They really yeah. want it. And this was a, a theme, I thought, in Zagreb. I thought it was a theme in the um, Grand Prix final in both the senior and the junior divisions. I, I felt like we had a lot of people trying to help steer skating, mm -hmm. steer what what should be rewarded? What do we really consider to be quality? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that they were really trying to steer that a little bit. And and Jason's win to me is is proof that that was happening at Zagreb. Yeah. Uh, and Kolyada, I mean, it was right there. It was right there for him to take. You know this, and it's just the pops, and it's not even on just the quads, the triple axle mistake. That you know, and this, it's it's getting like there's something off. There's something that clearly needs to be changed because. Here's a skater who should be probably winning right now. Right now is when he should be yeah. really hitting his, his stride. Prime. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not happening. And then, and you look and like there are men at the Grand Prix final who you can like Helen who Keller could, could tell you close. do not deserve to be there <laughs> compared to them. Yeah. You know, I mean Yeah, I agree. Because it, it in so many ways it doesn't lack in either area. It has tremendous skating skating skills, it has tremendous musicality, and the jumps are beautiful when he seems to flip on and do them. Yeah. So uh, when it seems like almost a choice one wonders why you choose not to. <laughs> I know. Why you choose not to win. Obviously, it's much more complex than that. I would love but it to does... see the rink, wouldn't you? To see what's going on? I mean, who Yeah, would... I'm intrigued because, you know, there's a, a bit more mystery around his camp. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as traditional, and, and, and they've had some women do okay, you know, but it, it is kind of... I'm unsure of, of what goes on there. Something very good must go on there, mm -hmm. but there there must be a disconnect in the preparation for actual events, I wonder. Yeah. So something's going on there. So that's yeah. very curious. Obviously, he doesn't feel 100% confident when he goes out to performance to be making you know, those mistakes. So right. um, that's something that we'll continue to be following. Um, and I think in the ladies' event, for Mariah Bell doing very well here um you know the under rotations in the short program continue to be a problem um but she right. continues to skate so freely in the free skate and she's been a stronger free skater than short program skater over the last several seasons um obviously she had a double here um that she cannot afford to have but i do think that she's doing enough to make um the world championship oh, yeah. team but she doesn't seem to be doing enough to really win the u.s title um, and there keeps being this rumor that Ashley Wagner is going to skate at nationals. And I don't, we I haven't talked about it cause I can't like really see this happening. Um, but like there are people that really believe that this will be happening, but I haven't heard like how serious and then like, why would they let her commentate if that's really happening? And like, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I can't really see that. Yeah. I'm not like, holding out for that even sort of happening, but okay. I don't think it would be bad. I mean, I think we'd like to see it, but I don't, I, I don't know. I, yeah. Whatever. I think that it's going to be Brady and Mariah Bell going to Worlds. I think the season, and especially if you follow the body of work uh, rationale, they've both clearly earned their trip to the World Championships. Absolutely. So, Brady now coming in on the side with that bun. <laughs> pun intended. Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, she had one fall in the free skate, but a really solid. She went back to the let's toe, Jonathan. But then turned around and in the long did a beautiful left loop. Like I, it was yes. interesting, but I do think your strategy that you mentioned and and, and that they're now doing for the the short is is the just GOE the right one. Is worth look. The GOE is going to come off of the Lutz, whether you do a Lutz loop or a Lutz toe, 
And if you can get the points, it's going to outweigh the, you know, the, the tenths of a point that she would get from doing the loop Absolutely. instead of the toe. And if you can do it better of a higher quality and be consistent and feel like you're going to nail it every time, why not do it? Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think she's she's in good stead. Although I believe uh, Mariah was scoring uh, um, was scoring consistently higher on the PCS. Well, why quite wouldn't a bit. you give Mariah the components of a Brady? Of course you would. You know, of like... course. Although she does have Brady does have some interesting transitions and things like that. But yes, I do think um, Mariah Bell is a much more enjoyable watch. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, she makes but it Brady, look like Brady work. has a fight in it. Brady she has, has she a has fight a fight in it she's, that that I think like you're right will keep her ahead. Yeah. It will, will keep her ahead. Safely she's obviously ahead. got a good mind so. for skating. You know, like yeah. she has a good mind yeah. for competition. Um, yeah. And she has been receptive to certain changes. It seems like this season to try to move forward. So hey, I mean a, a big win here uh, for her and I think you have to look, you know, forward in the US to not have a bad weekend. You look across no. Zagreb, you know, the Grand Prix final, not bad. Um, interesting week. But let's move over. The Junior Grand Prix. I know that we all are th- appreciative and thankful of Ted um, for getting us the, the, the coverage of the Grand Prix. His talking is becoming a lot. It's really becoming a lot. Well, but he, he is pretty good about waiting, at least, right? He's good at waiting. I find but... he's good at waiting, and so then I can actually mute um, once the performance is finished to just watch the replays, because I don't need to hear how great everyone's doing and what a wonderful effort they're making. He then just starts coming up with these completely nonsensical Freddy Buddy type like things where you're like, <laughs> what are you saying? I can't. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I mean, he starts saying these things about how Kostranaya has decided that she is going to be the winner. And you're like, "Um, I'm pretty sure the girls who did the quads just wiped out. And obviously her uh, strategy is playing off. I mean, Ted is just saying a lot of stuff. Yeah. And you can tell his confidence is growing because he's getting all of this positive feedback and love. And he's like, I'm going to say more. And it's like, oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Well, it's interesting because also like w- watching um, when Costa Naya popped the axle on her Junior Grand Prix and was so clearly devastated. Like you saw heartbreak in a young girl that like I, it made skating go away from me. And I was like, oh, honey, like it's going to be OK. I promise. And Ted had that kind of response to her also. So there was like some weird, like emotional vindication for Ted. I felt this time watching her like nail and win. But I... I obviously I'm obsessed with her skating. We've talked about it many times. She points her toes. She feels the music. She's elegant. She holds landings. She's doing such beautiful work in spite of the material given to her. I think she's winning, not because of the material given to her. (laughs) Um, But she took this. This is a cringy move. But she took that or whatever she did. And she she committed to it in a way that I was like, that's the best that could ever look. That's it did it you you gave it a better performance than it deserved but she had a smug face in the kiss and cry a little bit that told me a little bit like hmm i knew i could do that yeah quad, no quad mm-hmm. i like it because everyone's paying so much attention to the two girls that are doing the quads and both of the right. quads looked incredibly forced and they're from like a really walk technique that you can see isn't sustainable uh, and then, it, first of all, it looks like Trusova jams her back on every single takeoff of these jumps. And then Sherbakova looks dear. I mean, it's not a shock when she doesn't get the Lutzes around. Um, yeah. So, it, 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 and they're hard to watch, both programs. Um, Sherbakova and Tru- and Sherbakova last year had one of my favorite free skates the last year and a half. That she She's an her. artistic soul at heart, yeah. I think. She's not as far off from Kostranaya as these kinds of performances would lead you to believe they no, are. No, but they're putting so much on her and jamming the technical content. The costume is so over the top. and The, the movement. Honestly, if you just sent her to like John Nix once a week when he drives in <laughs> from Mexico to work with some of Jenny and Todd's mm-hmm. skaters... Uh, literally, um, you would see that like she just needs a little refinement and to stretch the leg here. And like, to, if you removed the technical level on her, you might see her win a competition or finish second here. But instead, they're forcing so much. And they, the, the, the telling thing that you can tell when these skaters are skating from a place of fear is when they finish 
the program and then they look really scared because they're going to the kiss and cry and they know they're going to hear it. And in addition to their disappointment and there's, you see it, you know, especially right. with um, Anya, you really see the stress level when she finished and how upset she was and the tears and everything. And, you, you know, it's a hard for anyone to have that much pressure, you know, and have it not go. Yeah. Well. Um, right. And you can obviously there's a ton of ability there, but it's just it's it's like you're putting more difficulty on before the basics and the fundamentals are really evened out. And uh, it's a big cart before the horse. Yeah. And, and I think because we've talked about it, I was like, how am I watching mm -hmm. this young junior skater do two quad lutzes and a quad toe or whatever is happening and I'm not excited. Yeah. It blows my mind. I, you know, she practically has at times more technical content than Nathan at the at this juncture and yet it doesn't it doesn't count as much because there's an element real. of of I don't want to say freak show because that may, but it's like a trick pony. It's a trick. You're like look at the trick and if if the trick isn't there, understandably so, it's ridiculously difficult. Then you're kind of like I'm not quite sure what I'm left with here. But you're looking at like the quad lutz that has the full blade assist on the takeoff with the weak edge uh, on the takeoff and then she's getting into the backspin position and she's rotating really fast and then land and you know that like this is not a technique that's going to last in a year. I mean, look at how much um, of a struggle Zagitova is having compared to a year ago. I mean, you could just see... And she wasn't doing quads. Yeah. She was just doing triple, triple slate in the program. I mean, I can't... I, I fear. I fear for those two, but... Yeah. And I I, I, the Kostranaya thing, I think it was important to see the judges are like, yes, this is what we like. Because it's we quality. Want this. It's quality. It's and beautiful. And if skating isn't beautiful and technical, it's not like she flakes out on the jumps. Yeah. She's not avoiding triple triples, you know. Mm -hmm. But when she does them and her arm is aloft and it's just the most beautiful thing you've her ever seen on those. Her leg is held afterwards. <gasps> and, and she has more musicality that she's able to express and... I mean, we've seen the her. short, especially, I, I yeah. mean, aside from this moment, um, I thought the short, especially in the triple lots, triple toe, the triple toe had the arm that was so elegant and the landing position that she could have. It was like when Michelle Kwan held that double axle edge, like all the way around. And you're like, wow, that's different. That jump means more. And that's what you want to see as a viewer. Um, I really find it hard to get through Truce of a Free Skate. It's a long time to watch her, I have to say. Yeah. For someone that, yeah. that their spine doesn't relate to music and they're not, and they're rushing and they're forcing these jumps that are like barely getting around. And then it's, it's very mechanical and really it's a long, long program. And the shrill music in the Free Skate is like a lot to take in. Yeah, it's that fifth element thing and there's like some weird aliens that sing opera in the thing sort of and it's, it's but it's but it's just again it's adding to the idea of freak show. It's, it's like just, here's now she's in a strange outfit pretending to be an alien with Jonathan, this weird alien Every movie time you and, say the word freak show the dislikes in the video are going to keep going up. I'm just telling you. I'm just oh, like, sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't mean <laughs> yes. I sorry. Sorry. I I mean it's like a spectacle. Like yes. a, ooh, look at that. Point yes. and look at what she can do and it's adding that like she's a trick, like a trick yes. pony. I don't yeah. I do not mean she's a There just are people yes. who are going to misunderstand this. Yes. And I'm just Thank trying you to, for clarifying yes. or telling me to clarify that it just it, it's like um it's a dog trick kind yeah. of idea oh and, god and, now you clear compare the rules oh, to dogs even, no, forget it keep going it's keep like going. A, <laughs> i wish well we I understand well. what you mean it's like a talent show trick you know like it's it's a, not a, mm -hmm. a sustainable beautiful technique that's going to last for years and years to come um uh interesting thing because and you look, Rika Kihira is going to Colorado in January and February to work on quads at altitude. So, like, you can just see that there's a difference in the approach, this, like, forced, this, it's short-term right. gains versus long-term strategy. Uh, right. It's kind of like how the stock market, you can make a lot of money quick versus making a long investment in something. You know, it's yeah. like that, it's like doing or, the bubble before it bursts rather than like a long, you know, smart investment strategy. We uh, even say penny smart, dollar stupid, which yeah. is a bit, this this exploitation too soon to me means enjoy this flash in the, uh, while you have it. Yeah. Versus to see that arc of Rika is tremendous, yeah. is tremendous. And I, she made such an impact last or two years ago at the junior Grand Prix final. Mm -hmm. And you knew that all this was coming, mm -hmm. but it, they were going to take their time and mm -hmm. look, it, yeah. it's paying off. Yeah. 
So you you watch and you see like with truce of, and the stress on the Atari Juniors is it's a lot. You can see like it's both a, physical and emotional. I yeah. think. Yeah. It just looks like it's too much with the number of quads, and it does pay off when they do land them, and obviously they win things, but they're not. It's not like sustainable. So it um. It's a hard It makes bar. me wonder what the Kostranaya situation is and why she is allowed to kind of rise above it with a different level of program and with a different quality of content. If she fights on that, if she has an advocate in the rink that lets her do that, or if just truly she is so set in the from when she came that there. The, so she came angry. later. So she came later yeah. than the other two. And that's one of the things where you don't. She has a little bit of a different jump technique where she doesn't rely on the backspin as much as Trusova and Sherbakova do, which helps them do the quad. But in the long run, once they go through puberty, will hurt. Um, and right. you look at Kostunaya, who came later more formed in her jump technique, and it's just like a fundamental difference, and it's probably why she's not, like, and she probably has tried to, like, reel off the quads when these other two are in the rink, but the other right. two are doing it, and then she'll probably have a longer arc. I'm just, like, it, it'll probably wind up working. Yeah, I, and I felt like, now I'm making all this up, obviously, but that's what I felt I was seeing play out internally mm -hmm. in her head in the kiss and cry. Mm -hmm. I feel like there must have been a conversation, even when she was doing those beautiful triple axles. Are they going to put in her triple axles or she not? She probably and secretly has a resentment towards the fact that these other two have been getting so much praise and so much attention. I mean, look, the Japanese... Uh, documentary did a whole thing on the other two girls and how they push each other in the rink and they completely left out the fact that there are three of them going from event to event one together. of the most beautiful skaters yeah. in the in the ladies discipline that russia has ever seen she's just skating in the background of the film <laughs> like, yeah. yeah i mean yeah. from the mothers and ever i mean come on there has to be a lot going on here that you obviously anyone would feel that you know so right. um right. yeah and i think it's I don't think anyone's choosing. It's just what's happening. But and fans and every everyone, you know, there's a lot yeah. going on there. But I think, look, obviously, if she picked just one Romeo and Juliet, it would be a more successful um, than the free. And we'll get to bad uh, Romeo and Juliet edits when we get to Madison and Zach and that train wreck of a of an edit of the free dance <laughs> that is inexcusable. Yeah. And you know that I really like them. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, and again, th that's the problem is when you love Kostanaya and when you love Hubble and Donahue and and then you're just like, well, so why why are you making it harder for me to like them? Because I, I'm coming rooting for them. Oh, my God. So yeah. last night, Elkin Kavas texted me, my good friend, and he was like, oh, my God, I love Hubble and Donahue's choreographic step and how they do it early in the program. I was like, yeah, the choreographic step that was choreographed to a different piece of music and they just kept it as is you know it, it highlighted that part of kissing you when the piano goes and it's the transitional right. bridge of the of the song <laughs> yeah yeah and they've completely just they now do it to overona i was like oh yeah it looked better before but yeah i, I can understand well that was a bit how i felt when ashley wagner changed um from her romeo and juliet mm -hmm. to uh back to samson and and dalila and she just kept the same footwork sequence <laughs> Why not? Just put it on top of something else. Who interchangeable? Yeah, it, it's a rhythm dance, I guess. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was a cringe moment um, for Hubble Donahue. But um, in the junior men, interesting of Gogolev um, doing so well here. And I don't honestly. We made a joke, obviously, that the fact that he left Brian. Obviously, his work with Brian has obviously allowed him to get to this point. Lee Barkel has been paying probably more one-on-one -on -one attention with him, and I would think in the future going back to Brian would be a smart decision for him for his overall development. But you probably, right. what I honestly think is the situation is that Brian has too much on his plate at the moment, where we have just seen him travel so Tumultuous stuff. This isn't even like, the, like you have a stable of skaters and now you have to travel and see them. This is a lot of new, this is a lot of attention, this is a lot of in and outs. I, I think- Why is he going to China? Going to China, going to all the Junior Grand Prix with the Joseph fans and the, the, the Gogolovs right. and the this and the having work on Genya's jumps and then working with Hanyu and then Hanyu's injured and then you have Jason Brown and then you have Champs Camp and you have the High Performance Camp and you have like, you're, uh, like what, what are you really doing with these one week sessions in China in the middle? What are we really getting? So 
there's right. just like too much going on. And I think for him, and I think it happens, and you, you, we've seen it happen in Montreal with the dance teams and and everything. And before Montreal, we saw it happen in Detroit. Detroit, I, I think, and we've yeah. seen it happen in Detroit with you and Jason. And we've seen it happen so much that this happens in skating again and again, where like it's your moment to cash in, and like you understand it, and at the same time you can see it, and then things even themselves out over time. And I think that this is one right. of the things with that that it's it's not sustainable me working on so many hard on so many videos and then trying to do it and then trying to go through the final and then i can't find this and then i get sick and then it all evens itself out so right anyway yeah. i think gogolev great job here alternate had a f- freak bad performance but it, yeah it was a fluke that he ever was supposed to be the alternate i mean yeah. to me he seemed the favorite almost from the get-go of the season yes, i mean absolutely yeah. absolutely and yeah, yeah. And the work that they've done with him for years gets to this point. Wins at the end in the long run. And, and the thing is, I'm, I'm becoming more and more concerned about Camden um, and his long-term development because it is actually Camden's time to really be maturing into a world team uh, competitor. But And it looked like he was right there until he wasn't. Yeah. It does and it doesn't, right? Like he doesn't okay. really have the quads consistent. Um, and... I know that Tom is a good jump coach and he obviously works with Tammy who's been successful as well, but how come Max's air position never improved and Camden is jumping like this. I'm sorry, I'll do it upside down where the legs look like this on the jumps. And like, that's not a conducive, an air position that's conducive to success or high GOE. Um, Because I'm certainly not awarding it a high GOE on anything when I see that in the air. And it just happens from event to event to event. You know, and you start to wonder, he has a lot of programs that are well crafted. He has a good aesthetic overall on the ice, but it's it's not coming through. There's something missing in the preparation that makes me wonder. Um, yeah. And then obviously this free skate had to be a disappointment, but we've he's had some disappointing free skates over the course of the season. Um, it just makes me wonder, like that whole experiment that's going on in Colorado, and like how beneficial is it, and like. What's missing from the thing? I well, honestly... what's being done? What's being done to remedy what seems to be a developing pattern here? I yeah. honestly think in Colorado that you need to treat Tom and Tammy as jump specialists and have someone else above them, like Elton John, who's in charge of putting the whole package together. The way a Terry's response. Except we for... don't want a Nina Mosier package because if I had to listen to one more soft rock, but I got you. I got you, Dave. <laughs> there needs to be the overall head coach. Yeah. In putting together the and letting other people be specialists and kind of be in charge of the development. Because you can see there's a lot going on, but like there's not the one figurehead who's in charge of being like the organizer and the diplomat between everyone. And I would think that could get very chaotic. Yeah. You, you know, and, but like you're saying, even these jump specialists don't seem to be addressing what they do best, which is to correct that position. So it, we also it does have make willful wonder. teenagers that we're dealing with at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. Understood. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But he obviously, hopefully, a learning experience um, after that free skate, because, you know, and great short program for him. But you, could, yeah. you see the potential and you could see. You should, he should be <laughs> competing to make this world team, and it looks like it's going to be Nathan, Vincent, and Jason going, right. you know, clear right. cut. So, yeah. And I think, you know, in pairs in, in the dance event, um, Nguyen and, uh, you know, Igor's team missed the twizzles and the free skate, just, you know, unfortunate mistakes. They were a fluke overall. to me. Yeah. 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 But, uh, you know, another growing experience. So let's discuss. The seniors, Jonathan. We there's a lot to get into, and let's spend the time. Where Wait, I'm gonna take a big chug of water for this one. Okay, <laughs> could not be any bigger. Um, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, so, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> oh my god! I made a joke to someone about skating with Mateo to a skater, and the skater wrote. Could you imagine the jealousy from Jonathan Byer if I skated with Matteo? That is what this person <laughs> just said to me. <laughs> it's, yes, yes. It would be real. It would be real. Mm-hmm. Oh, it would be you and that water. Just, you're being... Well, you know what? 
You're being no, Zach Donahue. I'm, I also, I'm you know being how, what? Remember I always said that Zach Donahue reminds me of the person that drinks the milk out of the carton. And... Oh, hilarious. <laughs> That's right. Right out of the free. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is that I'm not supposed to drink the water in this like hotel or whatever. So then I just end up buying these like gallons and then you feel like a weirdo, but whatever. Okay. I get <clears> it. <throat> and you need to hydrate, protect the voice, Jonathan. I mean, I mean the gift <laughs> by four o'clock, it's got to be doing its thing. <laughs> so I really enjoyed watching the final at NBC Sports Gold. Unfortunately, I've been a little sick. So I fell asleep so early the last couple of nights that I haven't been able to like, I was literally like watching the pairs free and like, being like, oh my god, do I have enough energy in me to get through one more four minute performance? And I, I didn't. Yeah. So and I had nothing. Just tough that way. Yeah. I had nothing to do with the skating, but being under the weather. But okay, Vanessa and Morgan, they look best when they're both in the body suits. Um, the aesthetic in the yeah. short not as good. Um, have to say, Charlie White did a really great job on that free skate. Um, isn't it incredible? Because it, it's modern and it's open and it's broad. It's yeah. like something about it. It really made me look at Charlie in a different way. You know, I at first assumed Guillaume had done the long because I liked it so much. And then when you were like, no, 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 it's Charlie who did the long. I just was floored. There's some like incredible moments. Like there was one thing. Oh, the exit of the Axel Lasso lift. Mm -hmm. There's like just the exit is perfectly timed and perfect. It's He looked at who he had in front of him and he gave them the perfect vehicle. I, I yeah. think he deserves an award. Yeah. It's one of the best crafted, I think, free skates we've seen. I, I'm most impressed when you look at the transition into uh, the triple cell. Sometimes Vanessa's posture isn't always the best going into the triple cell cow. You watch, they do the transition and then it like, it fixes the problem that can sometimes happen. Yeah. And it's such a cool and unexpected entrance into it. Uh, really impressed uh, by that. And they had some mistakes in the short, came through in the long. And it was funny. Um, Morgan kind of said in the interview that it wasn't, um, he's like, I think we showed what we can do in practice and we have to up the performance. And it was funny because when we were watching it, I, I think I texted you and I said, oh, okay, now it's time to perform. Because <laughs> they yeah. looked like they were really <laughs> thinking their way through it. And it looked really good, but we saw at Canada, they had kind of the magic performance and it right. lacked a little bit of the magic, but it was still great. Um but the thing about the free skate also is it has an epic feeling to it and mm -hmm. they can fill that really well. Mm -hmm. The uninvited is a little um, darker, a little grungier, and they seem um, to perform their best when it is open and, yeah. and grand. Yeah. I think that the short was a good choice. The free is just better. Um, yeah. Uh, and one of those great programs their, their twist is getting better and better yeah. which is nice to see yeah you can see they still haven't figured out the slide uh to the end and you could see vanessa like looking to see if they got the deduction and because and they she, did <laughs> did you notice that she tried to stop the forward momentum with her skate as they've tried to tweak it when you and watch... he did that thing again with his fist also which i was trying to remember back to our interview because i thought he said the fist was the indicator that gave them the deduction but yeah. then he did the fist, but he did it apologetically, and he did it while the music was still going. So there's much. I think they it's did, the slide. In France, they did it different, didn't they? They don't stop the movement. You know, if you yeah. cannot stop your, honestly, it's a silly thing when you obviously you see that they're in the. Obviously, we want the cool ending, right? Like, so we want the cool right. ending, and you, I, the rules are rules. I understand. You want the cool ending. They have to figure out a way to disguise it, whether he's doing something with his toe rake in the back or something to get it to stop the momentum right. from, from the cool lift. So hopefully they can find a way to get the cool effect with. Because, I mean, let's say everyone just brings their A game at some point at Europeans, Worlds, wherever, that point deduction will be very costly. Oh. You know, uh, I, I mean, it's tricky. I mean, even Torval and Dean knew they had to lay down at the end. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, they would have just been sliding. <laughs> well, that was the whole thing that they kneeled in the beginning because they figured out right. that if you started skating with your actual skate is when they started counting. So, right. but I think Tarasov and Morozov, interesting here is you watch them, the quality is so much better than the other teams inherently the inherent just quality. holding hands and stroking yeah like it was just like the minute they go into the preparation for the twist you're like ooh, i'm already into it and literally they're just doing crossovers cross yeah. cuts whatever we want to call them so i they, mean and the 
you start to wonder, like, what is the problem? Because watch on the three jump combination, um, you know, when he singled the second. I mean, like, that kind of a mistake. Well, that's what I meant by a flippant teenager. I felt like there's kind of like a whatever, who cares? Like, a thing, because sometimes they just seem to choose to just throw it away. I in moments that, like that. And I thought that they had it more so. I thought when we were watching it live, I was like, they might have it tonight. They look more together, more centered. And then they went into the three gym combo. And they're, they remind me of Gracie Gold in the sense that when they have one little mistake, they can't move forward and get past right. the mistake. And, just, and maybe that's because they do sections as opposed to full longs. But Gracie did full longs and still had this problem. But... We happen to know that in their training, they do a lot of repetitive sections. And you can see that maybe mentally they don't move beyond the mistake. So then when the throw happens and then she doesn't, you know, land the throw. Yes, I guess that's what it is. Because once the mistake has happened, this whatever feeling that mm -hmm. I, I kind of sense as a viewer, I wonder if it's like, a well, who cares anyway? We already messed it up. And it's like, I know, but you can mess up and still really kind of make an impact if you just they keep, could keep if, fighting. If they had one error, they could still win. But yeah. it was really the throw that really was the kicker. And then it's going to hurt the yeah. opponents. And then it's going to, you know, everything starts right. to fall into play. But I, yeah. They have the goods. It's so frustrating because they're kind of becoming, like Shoma Uno, they're becoming the perpetual runner up because of the errors. And you're like, you well, should the perpetual, be perpetual, like Shoma's got what, 325 silvers? Yeah. I, I mean, they, they've got a lot He's of bronze silver and just off the podiums. Yeah. They're I, the, I mean, that's they're the, the pewter. They're the bronze pewter of pairs yeah. when they should be finishing. I mean, they lost to Pung and Jin here. And it yeah. was a great day for for Pung and Jin, but, I mean, come on. The Tarasa Morozov should be cleaning up in terms of right. the gold medals. Um, right. And you start to wonder, like, what needs to be changing? I mean, that is a situation where everyone needs to look at, at the drawing board and be like, what what is happening? I mean... This is a team well, and it makes one wonder a bit about uh, our friend Elton Nina Mahusher because uh, it was a thing that happened with Tatiana and Max for a very long time until all of a sudden they were just completely solid one day. But it was also a thing that happened a lot with Klimov and um, uh, Zenya. Like there's, there seems to be a difficulty in consistently showing up. Yeah, that comes out of the rink, and whether you're saying that sections or some sort of mental preparation that is or is not happening beforehand, but it seems to be a pretty steady issue There's because some... they have quality. All of those teams and they've have brought in Robin, the and they've and Robin. By the way, Robin seems to be shopping for where he's going to wind up next. If you've noticed, he's been pushed aside here. Then go to the United States. Please. He may be going. <laughs> he may be going to Delilah. If you notice. Oh well, well that would help. Yeah. If she but if you him. notice, <laughs> Trankov kind of supplanted him, and he seems. And if, you, if you've noticed, his, his wife seems to be running an Instagram and doing a lot of public relations, skating kind of things okay. going on. There's a lot of shifting happening. I'm just, yeah. you can just like it's transparent. Um, uh, I think that it's going to be really telling to see what happens forward with Tras Murozov because how many times are you supposed to win? And like there were times that they were supposed to win Russian nationals and then they give it to Senya and Fedor when they still have mistakes. Right. And you're like, right. okay, what is happening here? This is a team that is so talented and it, they're not new, right? Like they've been at the senior No, now. and that, that's what I was trying to think. Did you find that they were slightly more consistent when Robin was around? I don't even know. It's been such a mess for so long. And yeah. They, they're better than they, they were, were at last least... year. The, the overall level was a bit more consistent. I, I am, but I could be having revisionist history with with Robin. But the material always struggled. The material was always. I always feel like minute them. two to three is where they lose it in the program, and maybe when we get to yeah. like one forty five, is where like the opening is good, and then the middle. Starts. And then they literally, it's like she has had it. You know, yeah. I mean, both of them are like we are finished. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and apparently on many of these Russian teams, the male is the diva. Um, and you could see, like, he gets very angry mid-performance, and then she kind of looks flippant, so... Yeah. Interesting. Pong and Jin, I have to say, this team, remember, they were both, like, the second choices when the, right. in the split, right? So this has been, like, the underdog team in China. They've been the only ones performing for China this season. They have really developed. Granted, they still have some inconsistency on the jumps, but overall, the overall look, confidence, demeanor, deportment, 
I don't know why I keep yawning. Um, because you need more air because they're just, they take your breath away, Dave. Well, I love the short. I think it was a, a very um, smart move to package them as whimsical and fun. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just the right amount of playful. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when they try to do it too much, it's either gross and over the top or it's a mismatch. But it was just the right level that it was a charming skate that was well done and easy to see them in first. And Pong has a really charming way of performing. She's really yeah. special with her whole yeah. body, the movement, even the way that she hits the ending pose in the free. When you watch mm -hmm. her to perform, she's really special. There's yeah. a reason why she, we always talked about her and the other team was called the team in light blue. They were talking, right. they were called that because they had no discernible characteristics other right. than that. Um, that she has a star quality and a performance that's really been developing and it, it's, it's quite nice to watch. Um, it's so a, it's a less effective it, or it shines out more mm -hmm. in the, in the short for me, that yeah. kind of thing that kind of energy and special thing that she can bring. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it made sense to me that in the free, it was never, but what a, what a huge deal for them to be second. She I looks like she's really, her, her confidence seems to really be improving as she's skating with Jin. It seems like overall, like she's gotten better and better and better um, in mm -hmm. these three years. So I have to say that was great for them. Other teams, Mateo and Nicole, I think uh, she's had a rough couple of skates. The costume is atrocious and the free, the music cut of Tristan and sold it's not what it could Even be. Even for him, because it, for you to make him look dumpy takes work, I think, because yeah. you know he's my end all be all. But like, what is that? You know, like the open cross things and, and her jumps have consistently been more out of whack than I'm used to throughout this fall. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not quite sure where they're headed with all that. That but. could be post-Olympic whatever, but who knows what's going on. Yeah. Um, as far as Zabiaco and Enbert, um, you know, obviously they were disappointed not to medal here. They had a good short program overall. Um, they continue to be showing nice quality. Again, like the other Elton John teams, there's something that's a little bit of a disconnect because it looked like they underperformed as well um, when they had but, a lot but of nice I'm... qualities. I miss that one element of like spark from them. And like, you know, even Tatiana and Morozo, we, we talk about like, uh, maybe they're safe or maybe they're just like generically lovely, but they do have some wow moments like the twist or like they're just in inherent quality. And uh, Zabiaco and Envert kind of failed to grab Correct. my attention. Yeah. They're a slow and, burn, but they were the ones last year that the free skate was like kind of a nice moment and then like the wings would come out and it was a little much, but it was like, right. that was a nice program, you know, like overall, yeah. but they're missing that extra, <clears throat> you know, like yeah, some sort of wow factor. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on there, uh, but I would be really curious what will happen as we move ahead. Uh, now in the dance, let's talk about Hubble and Zach. I mean, this is... Okay, before we get into Hubble and, and Donahue specifically, I would love to just pick your brain for just a little okay. bit about the rhythm dance because I'm having a tough time. Okay. I am having a tough time. And you were so sweet and you sent me all these wonderful examples of tango romanticas or whatever. Yeah. You sent me a Tessa and Scott one mm -hmm. uh, from Vancouver, right? Mm -hmm. And then you sent me the, um, me the French. And Pesora. Yeah. Yeah. Who was actually kind of my favorite rendition. That okay. was the that was the the pattern when I saw it that kind of made the most sense to me. There's a little the bit of a we were staccato talking... movement to the to the pattern, you know, and there's a okay. lot of like where the movement they, it moves like oppositionally and then comes back, you know, like the, it's yes. It's... And, and so when the French did it, there was a sharpness to mm -hmm. it that I seem to be missing pretty consistently. Mm -hmm. And these kinds of um, it's not as maybe fully extended as or sweeping yeah. lines as we have seen in other of the patterns. And I miss that just on a personal level. But then it seems a lot of these teams become very cluttered. Well, it's very tricky. So you watch, yeah. like, so it starts when you go into the first key point. It starts with the helicopter. Then there's that one move where they kind of extend and the, the female extends her leg. And they go, but kind of extends, right. right? It's not like that extension I live for. It's like a pseudo one. Yeah. And it's only on half of a curve, right? Really almost a quarter right. curve where they, it goes out and then they pull in and they get ready for the first key point, which is where they hold the inside edge for four. 
it's a very like awkward and we're going back and it's very difficult. And the, this is yeah. a particularly difficult pattern. Um, you know, like when you watch other ones, it was like, okay, the Choctaw is like the really key pattern that they have to get the edge. So on the first one, it's difficult because the man and has to get to the outside edge and it goes outside to an inside and it's a lot of counting, which we know Cizeron has had issues with on several right. <laughs> short dances, but it's a, it, they have to count to four, but it's a very fast tempo. So one, two, three, four, right. it's almost like cut time. You know, it sounds like right. if you're a musician. Right. Um, and it's for four, but it's, and it, everything has to happen on one. So it's like, it's not and one, it's one, two, three, four, bop. And that's kind of that rhythm to the, and it can be a little right. jarring on the ice. Hubble right. and Donahue do a better job of the pattern overall, but even they're missing sometimes the key points. They got the first key point here, but then they didn't get the second. Um, there's a bit of thing on the second key point, the both skaters have to do a rocker and they have to go from outside to outside edge. And it's very difficult. And then they have to do a, um, a clean back three outside to inside in unison. But a, there's a lot of people that are getting maybe a little flat or because of the way the the, te- the pattern is positioned and they're being very, very picky about it. So you'll often see that no one is getting the levels. And that's why the yeah. Italians are doing so well this season is they tend to get more of the levels um, than some of the other teams and it's really helped them. Yeah, overall. they almost found their way in yeah. through this. They, they put all their eggs in that basket and it seems to be working. Um, the thing like when we were talking about like Ashley or even Hubble and Donahue in the free, just kind of interchanging footwork sequences regardless of the music. To me, of course, it seems so horrifying because what I love about mm-hmm. certain skaters is they respond to the music with the movement. Like they inspire each other. So So all that you just described about that rhythm dance, Mm -hmm. what a nightmare to Mm -hmm. now go find a piece of music Mm -hmm. that fits exactly what you need it to because that that rhythm wasn't designed to match any of their music. They are doing it kind of the opposite way, which makes me wonder for these higher level teams Mm -hmm. who are trying to have the funds. Oh, yeah. yeah, they have the funds. Will you go write something? Yeah. Will you go tell someone we need some accordion tango thing? And here is what we are doing. We're going to show you our silent pattern and we are going to do it perfectly. And you just write us a little tango lick <laughs> that just completely matches this. They used to do it all the time. And you could find this, you know, you know, those guys in like L.A. that do these movie scores. They could pump that out for you in like two hours and, and just have it all ready to go. And it would make the pattern come alive. And I think that's the problem is we're talking about downbeats and counting this and counting that Guillaume is probably a listener. Mm -hmm. So if you're not hearing it, you feel like you're fighting the music, which goes against so many of these really beautiful beautiful ice dancers, souls. You know what I mean? Remember when they did the waltz? So I think it would be invested to write it. Remember when they did the waltz and Papa Sindakis and Cicero almost skated through the da, 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 da. You know, they didn't hear yeah. the rise and fall. And it, so I know that some people... But when you're doing a boom, chuck, chuck, formal waltz, you have no choice but to hear it, is is what I'm saying, but you know? They seem to skate... I remember watching them in Boston, and they seemed to almost skate through. <laughs> and, okay, okay. You know, and people would be like, but look One, at the Chinese who hear the waltz. And you're like, yes, but, you know, the overall skating skills, yeah. and, you know. But right. Hubble and Donahue do a pretty good job of the... Um, the the short dance overall the free is tough for me i thought that they took a a problematic free dance and made it worse you know like where you don't know what the good points are to your program this is a problem when you start like you have a piece of music like you have a concept and then you start to like swamp in and out (laughs) music like sometimes it can work with tessa and scott where they re-choreographed it and sometimes you can really just like ruin a recipe you know you could yeah you know. yeah it's get it yeah it gets so far away from where you started you might as well just start anew and it's interesting you bring up mm-hmm. um tessa and scott mm-hmm. um something about this mm-hmm. makes me think that this is their version mm-hmm. their version uh, it's not derivative but it is their version of a moulin rouge program Yes. They know they're up against the French. They know that this kind of Moulin Rouge thing held something. The romantic really... theatrical performance. Yes. And, and but that's not who this team it's is. It's not who they are. And to me, it's 
what why Tessa and Tessa and Scott were technically above and beyond. And to me, when I respond to a skater most, it's because they're doing something that is authentically them. And and a, a Moulin Rouge type of program doesn't seem authentically Hubble and Donahue, a more um, Vanessa and Morgan type yeah. of approach would work. Would be they should be skating more. to Wicked Game. That's genius. Um, that is a really good point. What I want to say is I lose myself in this performance really early where there's a really jarring, unnatural choreographic move that they do. In the beginning, they have this like angular thing with their upper arms. They like move around like when they're like facing each other. And I'm like, what is that? Like what? Well, or it sets it up like it's going to be a modern Benoit type of program. And then it's abandoned. The idea. And it's just like weird, you know, like, so what I got from this program early on is that there's clearly like a sweeping, we're trying to show off our edges in a romantic way type program with like the knee slides and stuff. And then they put like the Overona, which is so powerful on top of it and like really doesn't seem to like fit their smooth skating, right? Like so... I don't know. But it's big and they have big skating. So at first when it started in the stationary lift and these things, I was like, this has energy and this at least is taking up space. It's occupying space Mm -hmm. and speed and seems gravitas. But it's, but again, it's, that's not quite them either. I think they are more, they need that um, Vanessa and Morgan Morgan current modern yeah. just them it's yeah. just their style and and i they have something very special but they're fighting it by looking like an imitation of what atessa and scott might have done honestly they would be good with like a tori amos like that kind of like so something that's authentically them a regina and this Spectre, doesn't feel that. you know like a, a singer songwriter who has some soul to them and some musical knowledge but it's a little yeah. more current you know and that current. would be them. Like they trying... have they they could be sitting on a huge PR thing. They're beautiful. They are grand, and there's something Olympian about them. And I don't mean like Olympics. I mean like Grecian, like 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 Zeus. Like I, I see this like the their height and their broad skating and this huge power. There's a thing there, and this isn't it. You could tell that they've changed a lot. Like as people, mm. when you look at their social media and stuff, like they were always the perpetual underdogs who were like clawing their way up. And that was some of their appeal, right? Like that, right, them. Right. and like everyone, you know, you got behind, they didn't have the same funding or the same political backing and then they kind of made it happen. But now that they are leading- I'm really late, sorry, I'm doing that thing again. Okay. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Here, I'll, I'll go to the side like this. <laughs> now, <laughs> I... now that they are like, now that they are in the leading, they went from the best supporting actress to the best leading lady. And they mm-hmm. seem to be like completely overthinking what they should be doing instead of like trying to like change their approach and be Tessa and Scott. And or think it has to be different now yeah. that they're there instead of understanding that what you were you always there? special and you yeah. always did that. We just want more of you, not you doing leading team Even them stuff. using yeah. Maria de Buenos Aires. Isn't it curious that Madison would have the idea to do this because that's like what Marie France used as her. So she's channeling her coaches and channeling what they think of the, the sophistication. But it's it's an interesting thing where they're losing yeah. a little bit of the what's made them. Yeah. And they've lost their identity a little bit. Um, a little. I mean, and I think they just try subtle. to think this season. It's, little, and, it's yeah. subtle. It's not. It like, would be very easy to correct for next season if they wanted to. Yeah. But it could also be easier to go down this further, which is why I'm a little antsy about it. And you could tell, obviously, this is a coaching situation where the camp has a ton of new teams, a ton of new energy. You have, look, Sam Schwinard is in demand. Uh, Romain Hagenauer is in demand. Um, Marie France is in demand. They have Thank You Canada. They have Tessa and Scott who are still involved in skating in a big way. And they're trying to do all of these things and try to rightfully capitalize and enjoy their success, but then still move forward competitively. It's a hard transitional season, I think, for everyone. And I don't think everything has gone swimmingly. Um, It's a learning curve to, to, to be that jam packed and this and, is so place, interesting because yeah. there were there were marie france judges who were maybe on the technical panel and then judy bloomberg who's very american so obviously this was good for um hubble and donahue 
But then you have a lot of Julian judges who are actually making, and the push for Victoria and Nikita has really, like, it's been, <laughs> I, I think that they have nice qualities, but then you start to be like, wait a second. Like, you're giving them I'm going to pull score? up that thing I sent you because yeah. I couldn't believe it when we looked at the actual um, judges' ordinals for dance. It was... And by the way, uh, Pablo uh, Donahue did get a level two spin, which is like an error they should not be making. And I will say, but right. this, at this, we have to point that out, but like this, judging. So go, is just... Yeah, so Ukraine mm -hmm. had had Victoria and Nikita ahead by three points. Mm -hmm. Russia had them ahead uh, by three points. Italy, no, Italy had Victoria and Nikita in third. Spain had them in third. Canada had them first. Georgia had them first by a landslide. Georgia was across the board here, mm -hmm. Russia times 10 mm -hmm. uh, on, on the politicking that was happening here. And and when you really look at these ordinals, I like to use that skatingscores.com or whatever, yeah. and they, they lay it out and you, it's just egregious. But do you know who the referee was? was? No. Allah, the most notorious Russian oh, judge. Oh my God. <laughs> the, yeah. the wife of the head of the Russian Federation who's been involved in almost every judging scandal ever throughout the history yeah. of ice dance. Remember, she yeah. was the one that hugged Sotnikova. Hugged Adelina, yeah, yeah. That is the referee here at this event. I mean. And this was janky. It yeah. was some janky judging was happening here. I mean, yeah. the overall placements didn't end up totally offending me. Um, but what, what some judges were trying to do really was offensive. They were just yeah. unable to do it. Yeah. I mean, and the Italian team, did you laugh when they announced them as eight times silver medalists from Italy? <laughs> <laughs> that was ridiculous. Um, yeah. It's like, oh but my I God. love just seeing Barbara Fusarpoli. Like, I would love to have that kind of encouragement and energy. Like, what, talk about a selfless mm -hmm. presence in the kiss and cry. Anyway, it seemed so genuine. Her joy. And, I do like her. She's clearly no BS. Yeah. But there right. is a. Remember how strong she was as a technical skater. So the fact that the Italians are getting the Tango Romantica levels more makes than sense. makes sense yeah. you know there's... and they're they're navigating a tricky height situation not dissimilar to hawaii and baker but they're doing it in a totally different way in a much more athletic way to combat the lifts and things that way yeah. and sometimes i don't realize how um how much smaller mm -hmm. the italian guy is versus um yeah. baker yeah hawaii and baker i felt looked a little not up to the level of competition here. Um, okay. Obviously, they lost a lot of training time from the concussion, and I think right. that they had such a strong uh, summer going, and then they he had a concussion, and they lost a lot of the training time coming in here. So you can kind of see it where, you know, they won that event, and then they didn't have the, as good of a second event, and then they're here, and th the rest of the people have had a really strong fall. So you can kind of... There was a little bit of a difference there. They're playing catch up and it didn't look as they were as prepared for the Grand Prix Finals, the other team. And it seemed like a lot of changes had been made, mm -hmm. uh, but but at times it did seem a little more sloppy than I would have liked. Yeah, yeah. because they haven't been getting the levels of the Tango Romantica at any of their competitions. And it really... Yeah, the rhythm dance in particular seemed almost half-hearted, almost, yeah. you know, compared to the intensity of others. They really have to spend a lot of time on that going forward. Um, other, Stepanova and Buchan... I mean, not rewarded here. I mean, they didn't have the Julin love on the panel, but they had, you know, I felt that they seemed like they were rushing the short. Has she added feathers and just a bunch of like sand? Remember, remember Project Runway with Santino? It looks like in this short dance, I don't know if it was just the camera angle or I noticed it more. I was so distracted by her costume uh, in oh, the short okay. dance. Um, where I'd have to rewatch. Yeah. It was honestly like someone I'm just like, looking at him. someone was like, why don't we just add a bunch of feathers to your skirt? And like, okay. and it was like, whoa, what is like that mountain of stuff happening above your ass? Oh, like, okay. Yeah, I was. Yeah. yeah um, now, do you find her a bit of um, a Madison Chalk, perhaps? In a way, I can see why she's a lot of face, a lot of drama. I, a I mean, lot of face and maybe a little flat of the blades more than in comparison sometimes, to Buchan. Yeah. Sometimes I also find her very engaging where I Very. want Sinitsina to give more, and I find that Stepanova gives a lot. She can be a little flat on the blades, but she can also do a really great pattern sometimes. Here, not yeah. so much, um, right. but in other competitions, she's really done it well. He, that can also be how he is he is establishing the pattern and the overall like where the movement is, because remember, a lot of the difficult turns 
of the Tango Romantica and the key points happen in the corner and weaving around. So it's right. in like you're pushed and if you don't place and it And so just many right. of them were, were getting way too close to the barriers yeah. pretty consistently on the rhythm dance, like as if they didn't have enough spacing time in their in their practice sessions or something. So key points one and two, especially where they're placed, if you don't put it just right and you travel too far, you can get in a lot of trouble, especially when you're having to be, you know, glued to the inside to the outside edge. Especially in the second key point turn, it's really hard, and that's where we saw Piper and Paul have problems. Once, so I think, yeah, it's the space. And I think there, there. I was talking to a choreographer in London, and they attended like a, um, like a seminar for choreographers for ice dance this year. And one of the judges said, you know, something the ISU informed judging panels is they're looking for more entertainment factor out of their ice dance teams this year hmm. not dissimilar to a so you think you can dance kind of energy okay um and i thought one that's devastating because that's schlock that's not yeah. real and suddenly i was like but if that was truly the case that it's clear that Stepanova and Buchan took that to heart because what they are giving you in spades is energy and like razzmatazz. But I just am missing some of the subtle substance moments mm -hmm. that teams like um, Zach and Maddie are able to provide. But they yeah. are providing a large entertainment value, but they must have felt the pressure of, of where they're going to stack up mm -hmm. against um, Nikita and Victoria and, and this kind of thing. And they just... They were selling it, but they were selling it a little bit differently than when they had a bit more confidence and the, the field was less deep on their individual events this fall. There's a little bit of a lack of substance, I think, in some of these teams. Um, that, yeah. That you see it. Um, the free dance was okay, uh, but overall it was an interesting, um, interesting Grand Prix final in the dance, but I felt um, I felt the whole of Papa Doc and Scissor on here. I really did. I felt like... and. And the Hubble and the whole of Tess and Scott too. I was like, you know, there's an um, there was an embarrassment of riches last season that's missing this season, and it, it yes. felt very post Olympic Worlds. You know? And Zach and Maddie belonged in that group when they had a bit more sophisticated um, mm -hmm. material. Also, yeah. you know what I mean. And uh, with Weaver and Poge, even though they may not be as much of a factor, they were interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Piper and Paul here would have been a more interesting watch, yeah. perhaps, than than who are other three. It felt three empty. More, but... It felt muted yeah. to me. The excitement. Yeah. Um, I think in the men's event, uh, Nathan. I just I think it was great that he went for the quad lutz. He wasn't successful. You could see him trying it in the warm up. He's trying to get it back. I feel like his programs have become more and more watered down uh, since the summer when they were so great, when we really loved right. them, and they've been like stripping the program like you know remember when he i loved the spin and the flying camel that he had and the the movement that he did out of it to the music that i thought was so cool that's gone um in the free there's transitions that are gone there's choreography that's you, gone and this was a thing, you know, and we were having a conversation um, very similar to this at the last Grand Prix final, where we were curious about what the arc is and where we were falling in the process of that arc. Because I felt like last year it was like, try everything. Mm -hmm. Try every technical thing you can, and let's just see where it lands. So I don't know if they had to strip it bare in order to try to get these jumps back in the repertoire, and then then they'll add it back in or I maybe they don't, will never back. add it back in. I, think I would assume before back. nationals, he revisits Sam and Shaylin. I think Shailen. they're resting him a bit too, like technically with his body. Um, I don't Smart. know if the choreography, I don't know if it'll come back or not. It's hard to say. Hopefully he'll have time. He may not have time to revisit them. Um, right. Maybe before Worlds, he'll you know work with them again. That would probably... Uh, I think the big story here to me is Shoma Uno for having so many wonderful qualities. At and what, he really does. It, but, it makes me mad in our group thing that Priscilla doesn't like him. <laughs> what, I mean, but yeah, how exactly. many times are you going to watch someone make so many mistakes? And like the, the wonky flip technique. And then, you know, you watch the mistakes that, that start to rack up. And you're like, 
You're blowing it's it. that check again. It's that check again with that arm. And it would be one thing if it was like, oh, he's trying this and it didn't work. But when it's kind of consistently the same issue and you know he's a serious student of the sport, mm -hmm. then you wonder how that keeps happening. Mm -hmm. If he hasn't visited Chicago in a while or something. Or... Yeah, but even then we didn't see a big difference, you know, like yeah. with the overall, yeah. um, the checking. And it's it's not a new problem. I think for well, two... it would have to be, I think, consistently addressed, not one week in, a, yeah. in Chicago for a season. I think it has to be constantly yeah. drilled in because the other has now become more ingrained, I feel. Like the mm -hmm. muscle memory is actually to save those really swingy landings. And when you have Nathan, his triple axle, which used to be a, a, his nemesis, has become really consistent. The quad flip has improved throughout the season. Um, he did have a problem on the quad toe. But overall, it seems like Nathan is getting more organized. And you can see that there's a systematic approach. Um, there's a plan. There is, is a plan. Yeah, that is clear. Yeah. Junwan, I thought that um, he he is doing well. He still he has problems doing both quads in the free. But you could see that he is trained so much that when he makes a mistake, he's able to move forward. I'm wondering if he has a back problem because when you watch him do, he does that back arch into his jump in the free skate and in the short. But even when he warmed it up, it looked like to be a little gingerly going into it. I was okay. curious about that where. It, it doesn't have the same expression. Um, but okay. overall, a really good step, solid, you know, performance for him. Talk about, you know, moving ahead this season needs, is going to need a lot of ballet class to kind of work on the deportment and the, the stretch. Well, and that's what, that's what I wanted to talk to you about because you really blew my mind and, and you hit the nail on the head when you were talking about mm -hmm. Kaori uh, Sakamoto mm -hmm. last time when you were differentiating between skating skills and artistry. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you do just see him like skating forward, it has power, it has glide, it's something about it feels really nice and I'm there for it and I almost think he's more artistic than he is based on the quality mm -hmm. um, where I kind of miss out on those artistic elements are yes in the posture itself although there's something kind of inherently cool and modern about his very relaxed posture yeah. in the more modern portion yeah. that he uses of Romeo and Juliet a modern portion that I was like why don't uh, Zach and Maddie use that because actually that seems to be more their style but um, and he has those very unusual gloves and i see that the hands are where i really they're like kind of dead energy hands mm -hmm. um and i know brian was disappointed with his scoring in the short um but i think the pcs will come i but i was surprised it wasn't a smidge higher because i enjoy the aesthetic of his skating a bit it just seems overly relaxed at times my inner frank disagrees with brian there i have to say um yeah, tell, yeah, tell me i just would like look when he does the posture into the triple axle like it becomes a little lackadaisical and a little sloppy and a little less refined and i think that if he's going to be a, a top man you really have to work on the back and the and stretch do you think and... that's him trying to relax beforehand or is that just he's not paying attention to details maybe a little both you know like you because know. you know like elizabeth kind of does all the hands go mushy before hers but it must be part of her strategy i think it's more than just more than just uh not paying attention to the artistic side so speaking of strategy okay i think the whole thing about elizabeth being sassy on twitter and like and oh, being healthy this season, yeah, I think, I think yeah. it's really helping, like, a lack of choreography. And, you know, Mike said it really well when we were watching her. He was like, she's kind of like when you watch a leaf blow against, you know, across the backyard. And it's just kind of going here and there and anyway and, and aimless. It's just... yeah. The free skate is well, a long all that time. organization you're talking about. I'm missing yeah. an artistic organization to, to what's happening. For her, I find that at least when she had the program, when she won the Worlds, there was a point of view to the program and it was structured in a way and it kind of all worked together. This is like, would be like, a she's more effective in the short program. It becomes a long watch for her in the free. It's kind of like Trusova, where the short is more effective than the free, where it becomes a lot. Like you start to lose the shtick. Um, yeah. So I think that our our admiration for her for being so fun can kind of like is mess. not based on the skating but based on the social media presence yeah i agree with you and she has like personality on the ice but there's not a lot of grace or artistry or aesthetics or 
choreography and it's a lot of arm movement but she could still ideally get some sort of performance mark but also the performance takes just a back seat for her you know ashley obviously we always knew had that kind of like social media persona also but she would also bring some of that schmacting kind of coy thing to the ice and it's interesting because there seems to be such a disconnect between Elizabeth's social media presence and the actual personality within the competitive programs. She has great lots by the way. And the Lutz toe this time incredible. Just incredible. I love that she's doing The jumps are really good. I have to say. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. You know the rest is where the problems lie, the spins, the everything, the, the positions. The... the step sequence in particular, because I saw that triple lutz, triple toe in the long, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is like, holy cow. And then she went into the step sequence, and I was like, oh my goodness, what is this? Are you making this up? You know, so it comes in and out. For Satoko, it looks like she's having a problem with the picking on her Lutz. And in terms of just, it looks like she's lost all confidence. As they've been trying to get the work on the rotation, it looks like she lost the feeling of it. Of like where she, and it may be like where she stretches back and actually picks in. And you could see that she looks a little lost on that. Um, Yeah. I have to say, I find this costume, and I said it before, and I tried to dance around why I don't like it. Um, and I will continue to do that. But I do think that it's distracting, and I don't think the cutout works. I think the other program emphasized and made her look bigger, you know, like made her look just strong, and it was solid color, and the the flip under of the red, I thought it was much more effective. Um, I find that I'm so distracted by, like, the one sleeve and the one rib, like, pointing out and like it cuts off her aesthetic and i'm like not even able to appreciate her beautiful shapes because i'm i'm just like looking at this dress that look it just is it completely the takes me out of the performance she her body is the canvas and yeah. especially in that short program and oh my gosh that final layback spin i like fell off my bed watching it i was like oh my gosh you're amazing but like when she had that initial almost plain ish mm-hmm costume it allowed me to just see the beautiful pictures she creates on the ice and this yeah. this fought that a yeah. little bit and i knew i mean obviously you see it's interesting how they do this with that technical box mm-hmm. right because you're following but then you why are we even following if all the adjustments are coming After. unseen to us yeah. yeah because then i was like oh wait she's she that's a really high technical score and i clearly saw her tight and like Mm. but i didn't expect 11 solid points to disappear those Mm. 11 points i mean obviously it's nonsensical to be like if she was perfect but if she had gotten the score that i saw she would have been third sometimes that box is bs because yeah and i don't know if it was in the pairs or in which discipline it was in there was something where a skater did like a two and a half rotation and it said a triple, or maybe it was a three and a half and it said a quad, but it happened more than once here. And they give them like the full rotation and you're like, but I just saw that and I know that they didn't do a quad cell or they didn't do a triple cell. It happened more than once. And then it, and, then it and pulls back. And it's the inconsistency because sometimes they call it, they'll be yeah. like, oh, side by side, double sow cows or something. But then other times they're giving you the full thing. And then I was like, why aren't you adjusting this in time? I, I think it's yeah. pretty quick. Yeah. yeah, so that was... So that I, I got my hopes up for a second. Like, oh, maybe they weren't going to penalize her this time, but they did, as they should have, but... Yeah, it's happened more than once. You know, here. Yeah. Um, and maybe people will remember in the comments. Um, overall, I think that the plane just... It, you know, she has a problem where she's a very slight person. So you have to make the skating look bigger. Everything has right. to look grand. And I don't think that this dress does that. And I can see why her components kind of got lower, because you kind of are like, oh, yeah, she's kind of tiny. Oh, yeah, the skating is a little bit smaller than someone who has a bigger because, presence. Yeah, exactly. It seems like it's it's not projecting yeah. the same way as when she wore that solid color and she does a spiral. You're like, bam, you see extensive with, lines. With yeah. this dress, and it, like, this dress like draws your attention in because it does have like fine details, but I'm like, you know, like throughout <laughs> it. And I'm like, um, yeah. And you watch. So Calry skated after her. Calry is a very, like, big presence on the ice. Like, her jumps are huge. She carries a lot of fast. speed. Fast. Yeah. like, bam. Big coverage. There's yeah. not a lot of artistry going on, and there's not a lot of musicality, but she, like, really is, like, 
bam, like good skating skills, good jumps. And even with a fall, she's still got all of these components that are probably higher than she like really deserves in isolation. But I think it was the different the juxtaposition, juxtaposition yeah. of going after Satoko that really helped her here. Um, oh, yeah. You could just see the performance order. For Sofia Samadurva... My favorite is when she crosses herself before she skates to burlesque and talking about her, taking her clothes off. She was literally like, Ave Maria. And then she's like, yeah. So, <laughs> Except without the pizzazz. Yeah. So this is a lot. This is a like... And I swear. All the more reason to give Kostanaya those snaps because hers is exquisite. But yeah. man, this over the arm thing, uh, it's too much. I will say she made the Junior Grand Prix final, makes the Senior Grand Prix final. Very consistent season. I'm sending her to Worlds. I think the Russian World Team is a done deal. You do? I don't. Cause, cause now, why would you change it? If you're Yevgenia, what are you thinking at home? What is your strategy? Do you sit out? Do you just try to sit out? I try, try to, to be polite about up? this before and after the Grand Prix final. It's a done deal for me. She just beat okay. Satoko. Like, she was yeah. solid top five here. If she's healthy, why wouldn't you send Sophia? She's coached you by Mishin. You wouldn't send Sophia because I don't understand her point of view. And I don't think she has an identity on the ice from a fan standpoint. Okay. But she will probably deliver in a solid way. Delivering, right? And say... Zagitova has, an, say her blade breaks, right? right say yeah. like something freakish happens. Or Tukdemisheva, like, I don't know. Her dress breaks mid-performance, you know, the strap rips and they have to stop and she gets right. a time deduction and you need the third skater to get the points. And say you right. need Sophia to like finish like eighth. I trust that she's going to do that. Yeah. Be a solid top 10 finish. And say yeah. you need that at the world championships, I don't know what to expect from Jenya at this point. She yeah. could be great. She could be a complete mess. We see the V's on the spins. We see missed jumps. We see uneven performances. I have to say, I think Sophia's done it. Talk about body of work. I think she has it. I think yeah. if she does it at the Russian nationals, she's earned it based on this season. Yeah. And that whether has you nothing, love the, whether you nothing love the skating to, is different. Yeah. It's different. I'm just talking yeah. about looking at what she has done. If I were picking the team, I would send her. And I, mm. it wouldn't even be like, oh, I love this young girl, great energy. Yeah, I would be like, right, right. We have that. to protect our spots because we have 300 quality ladies waiting to go to Worlds. Yeah. She's the bet. She's yeah. the one went out and has done it under pressure every time. Yeah. That's the rotations. The jumps aren't of the highest quality, but she's done it. You know? Yeah. And then you have Duke Dimitrova who could go for a medal. You have Zagitova who can go for a medal. I think it's kind of clear. Um, okay. The same way I think Japan is kind of clear at this yeah. point. And, you know, and I, I think you look at the final and you're like, I don't really think that there's much that's going to change in three weeks. You right. know? Unless, like, Jenya, like, does the greatest performance at nationals of all time, then I think, you know, you have a, a little bit of a different thing. But even if she's like third or fourth, like I would really look at the overall season and be like, Sophia's kind of done it. Then she's coached by Mishin. He obviously has a lot of pull within Russia. Um, right. He has another top lady. I kind of think that like. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm curious what other people think, but to me, I think it's kind of, the writing is on the wall. As remember, when they, have, they all use that in the short program two years ago. Like right, 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 right. <laughs> I think like yeah. I mean yeah. For for Genia at this point, she would have to pull something out that was uh, was spectacular and and made you look brand new. Honestly, you know what I mean. It, that was a restart. It might be too late. You talked about the Nastia comeback like last week, and I'm reminded of when Nastia did make that comeback, and she was in a certain spot. And Kyla Ross was boring as anything and like not getting a spectacular score, but she was solid and did it. And you're like, she got the job done. Yeah. Sophia has been getting the job done. And that's, yeah. I think there, um, in terms of the top two ladies, Zagitova here. Interesting. I thought she looked really tight in the free skate. 
just she was skating to protect herself like she was yeah. skating um to prove something but not in a positive or to protect something that's that's very much what i got she had something to prove but not in a positive way i i felt very nervous for her um you know the jump technique and the wonkiness of at some times it, it didn't it didn't pretend to a great outcome um the skating skills if you didn't know that she was an olympic champion I don't know that I would go in the eights for a lot of the Carmen performance. And I'm curious, actually, no. I was thinking yeah. about doing a judging video and comparing her to Rika and where I see the difference in the points because I just don't think it's a very good program at all. And the yes, clutter and, and, and the, the scratching. And the clutter is, the clutter is, conf is compounded by the fact that her balance seems off. so inherently off. Yeah. Um, when she does the triple lutz, triple loop, so impressive. Mm -hmm. And then she does this like weird transition out where she does like a spiral forward and a something back. And you, she's literally throwing her weight backwards and forwards instead of someone who has that center yeah. that is just skating beautifully. Like it, it has a core to it. And her is, it's not flaily because there's mm -hmm. a lot of transitions and because they have over choreographed the arms. It's literally a balance issue for me, I think. Well, her posture is becoming as she's getting taller she's skating in a weird way and like she's using the pattern more to like before she's the like, lutz loop it forward with her head it's yeah. like a thing like where this like weird rhythm is developing on her, rather than just yeah. doing like a strong back lutz you know like across the right. ice like there's like a weird like she goes like that into it and it's it's a little strange uh I have, you yeah. know when you watch her do it um and i don't like even like when you watch her do a double axle it takes work to get her into that double axle. Like it's not just like a well, she white knuckles it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really strange. Um, and I, and I think she is like such a beautiful like girl she's and like a beautiful girl and the her spins. I do because I was like, like she the, really she she does have great spins. You could tell that she works really hard. And Jenna said that about her like before the Olympics. You know, she's like I saw her every day. Um, I think there's just like it's it goes back to the instruction and it goes back to the choreography you know like i don't danny's choreography she'll needs... do the work but what work is being told is she being told to do I, and i think that's the thing All i don't this dislike program her. is is like a thing that she does with the heel you know a repetitive yeah. movement that goes throughout the program like i and she does it and in her... to do to do carmen again and it's a terrible cut yeah None of her stuff ends properly. Dress is she great. like pretends to be arrested in one moment, but it's in the wrong musical moment. Like, I, are you telling the story? And that's what I felt just to go back to Zach and Maddie too. You can't randomly just die at the end of a program where you haven't been telling me the story except for the last 10 seconds. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you've been skating lovely, but like you can't just die at the end. And then the same thing, you can't just like pretend you're getting arrested out of the blue if you're not actually telling me the story. And it's okay to not tell me the story of Carmen, mm -hmm. but don't like start to in the middle. So usually, usually, a single toe loop would not be enough for a Olympic champion, European champion, uh, Grand Prix final, reigning Grand Prix final champion. Usually, when you have that kind of stature and buzz behind you, it's usually that's usually not enough to like lose a competition, especially when Rika wiped out on her first triple axel. However. Yeah. The rest of the performance had such quality. And even though she's not the most charismatic skater, she really hits her choreography on the music well and hits the pose as well. And even though she doesn't have a lot of face all the time, and, like, you don't... I don't sense that she genuinely, like, is an artistic soul. She's not a... She's not immune to the music. It's, you know, like, she is in the music, but she's not, like, over-emotive about it. Like, she's not, like, this, like, satiko artist but she's not like devoid of artistry so she's like somewhere in the middle but she knows how to hit her hand the layback on the accent of the music and like hold it up there with quality and you're like there's a lot of like studied and work that's been going into her over time that's starting to pay off and like she's not like she's not the she doesn't have that like that figure skater that stereotypical like ham personality you know yeah, that yeah. like that like someone has but she has a very organized mind about competition. You could see that she missed the axle in the warm-up, and then they showed her go and do it again, and she seems very steady. 
right? Like she doesn't seem she to She didn't be... panic. Yeah. In the same way, when she botched the first one in the program, she didn't panic. You saw her regroup. You kind of saw her in the slow-mo make a face yeah. like as she's down, like, oh gosh. Yeah. And then she kind of got up and just refocused and did it. And I'll tell you, when I was talking about like, I felt like some of the figure skating community was sending messages mm -hmm. about this is what we want, more mm -hmm. of this. I felt this was an example of that. They could have justified a, a quasi-controversial win for Zagita Vahir, but it's not that Rika is so even inherently artistic, like you were comparing her to Satoko, like there's, it isn't that, but you know she's, she strives for that. Well, there has to be, look, there's always a pendulum in skating. And we yeah. have been pushed so much of these cluttered pantomime programs with the questionable right. technique and the questionable posture. And then someone comes out and they have like a really pure skating aesthetic, even if it's not like with a mistake. And even if it's not that set like soul performance on the ice, she really hits some interesting shapes and interesting choreography. And like, maybe it's not a plus five, maybe it's a plus three or a plus four, but it starts to like add up over the time throughout the performance where I was like, okay, she's got that, got that. That was of quality. That was of quality. And it like adds up and the sum, and she didn't lose the performance once she made one mistake. And I thought that the difference in scores I felt was really justified here. And I felt like both programs, I was like, yes, she did it. Yeah. And, and, and she was even a little, like, couple of the jumps, the loop and the flip and the free, like, made me be like, whoa, because she was, like, a little wild on them. Mm -hmm. I felt like she, she like, reined them in. They weren't her ideal thing, but she made them work. But there's a joy to her skating. Mm -hmm. and, and I think when someone in, admittedly, we all know IJS is tricky and it's, mm -hmm. we're, it's always trying to fight to transcend IJS. And, and a lot of these Hamada skaters are striving for that consistently. And and especially you're talking about the juxtaposition of Satoko with Sakamoto, then with Zagitova and um, Rika, you see now Rika come out with a total center. She looked like a Yuka Sato against Surya is what it looked like, boom. you know? That's exactly it. There was a steadiness, a steadiness mm -hmm. in body and blade and her speed was beautiful. And it was just, to me, all the things I wanted mm -hmm. the person winning here to be. So for me in the senior ladies and the junior ladies, I loved seeing, regardless of the country, a reward being given to the quality of skating. And it wasn't skimpy, technically. This girl did a triple axle and combo, you know what I mean? And Custer and I was doing triple triples all over the place with the head or with the hand aloft. So it, it's, it rewarded it's that marriage. kind of skating. It rewarded the overall yeah. as opposed to the trick. You know, as opposed so now the young ones aren't trying to imitate Zagitova. They may try to imitate more this kind of program. Not that anyone should be imitating, but it's important to send messages about what what is quality. Yeah, and it's so interesting that Tom Dixon. I always thought he did better with male skaters that were kind of like the sensitive flower types. But look, Setako and Rika both worked with him, and he they both had really stunning free skates here. So that's a plus for him uh, moving forward. And I think, yeah, it was an interesting, interesting week. A lot to break down. We want to know, what did you think of all of it? Jonathan, I got you out on time for your performance. I have to go sing a Messiah. I even, uh, yes. And you know, I lie and I say, I have five more minutes than I tell you. <laughs> it's okay. Just I in case. To, I try yeah. to work it all out. Hold an edge yeah. and look sexy. Bye guys. <laughs> Bye guys.